a game development company is about to build a variation of Among Us, which has physics, objects have velocities, the characters have velocities, and you can push them. What they want you to build is a version where there's one character, and the character is just happy floating in space. But you can push it when you click the mouse. The character feels a force and starts moving with the velocity, keeps that velocity, real world physics. If you keep pushing, as long as you're keeping the mouse pressed, the character feels a force, feels a push. So that's what you're going to build. Now, do you remember that we built long ago our physics engine? We started building it. We created a baby ball with code and made it move with a velocity. Now, what we're going to do to that baby ball and the toy world is take that world and first add characters to it and also add forces to it. So forces and characters are going to enter our physics engine, proving that we can make our engine get closer and closer towards being a fully functioning physics engine. So are you ready? So at the end of today, you're going to be building an Among Us character that reacts to forces. Let's jump right in. The first thing that I want you to do is make it so that we create the same baby ball and give it a velocity. That's the first thing we want to do. It's the same thing that we had done as part of season one motion, but let's start again. And we're going to build on top of that. So let's begin. The first thing I want to do is take this canvas, and it would have been 400, 400. I'm going to make it 1,000, 400. Now what that's going to do is make it kind of wider. Then I'm going to just make the background black, because space is black, and I like black. There it is. Now this should just make the canvas black. Now I want a ball, right? And how do I, a ball in space, I can just use draw that using a circle. So I'm going to do that. A circle, and where do I want this circle? I want this at, uh, say, 100, 100, 100, say with a diameter of 50. Now, this will just draw a circle that can never move because its positions, these two are x and y coordinates, right? x and y. These two can't change because I've not made them variables. I want them to vary. So I'm going to make them, instead of 100, 100, I'm just going to make them x, y. So a circle will be drawn at the point x, y with a diameter 50, except the computer will have no idea what x and y are, right? Will this code work? It won't work because it has no idea what x and y are. So how do I do that? I have to create the variables. Variable x equals 100. Variable y equals 100. If I don't make something a variable, I can't change it, right? I can't make the computer remember it and change it. Now, what's the one line of code I can add to make this ball move? That's right, x equals x plus 1. Now, if I do that, what am I really doing? I'm making it so that each time the loop runs, the position, the x value of this ball keeps increasing. And that's what moving is, right? The position keeps changing. So till here is still motion. There is no forces in it, but let's see what this looks like. Bye-bye, ball. So the ball is moving through space. And I want you to get till here. Create the baby ball, give it a velocity, make it move, and then let's start talking again. Now I have a question for you, okay? The question that I have for you is, what's the velocity of this ball here? What's the value of it? Which part is actually changing the ball's position? It's this line of code, right? x equals x plus 1. So what's happening here? The position starts off at 100. And then after one time the loop runs, it becomes 101, then 102, then 103. So that creates the feeling that the ball is moving, right? as you can see. So what's really the velocity here? Think about that question. That's right. The answer is 1. The velocity is 1 because the ball moves one step, one pixel, every time the loop runs. right? So what I want to do is still here, I have not changed the velocity at all. You can't change it at all. Can you see that? If the ball starts going at a speed 1, it will always remain at that speed 1. But I want to change that. Why? Because if I have to bring forces into this world, the moment I apply a force, what happens to the velocity of the ball? It changes. So to make anything change, what do I need to make it? I need to make it a variable, because otherwise I can't remember it. And what variable shall I call this? I'm going to call this the velocity. So x equal to x plus velocity, because each second or each time the loop runs, the position changes by that velocity number. This might actually be a little bit confusing. Think about it. Right? How much ever the position changes, that's what we call velocity. So that number is the velocity, but this won't work because who knows, the computer has no idea what this velocity variable is. So as always, I need to go declare it. So var velocity 
velocity 2. Velocity equals how much was it? It was 1. So let's keep it 1. And let's observe. Nothing changed. x equals x plus velocity. The body is moving with a velocity 1. Now notice what happens. What I want you to do is notice what happens. If I make this number 10, what do you think will happen? Right? x will change by 10 every time the loop runs. So what will happen? That's right. Really fast ball. What will happen if I make it 0? The velocity is 0. The body is not moving because x is just x plus 0. Now if I make this something like minus 1, what do you think will happen? That's right, the ball goes backwards because every time the x is reducing. So with these, what I want you to do now is go ahead, create, add the velocity variable to your code like I've done and then let's start talking about how to add forces to this. Congrats, now you have velocity in your code. What I'm going to do now is make it so that I want to print this velocity, see this velocity, because as I'm going to change it, I want to watch it happening on the screen. So how do I do that? There's a new command. You may not be familiar with it. It's called text. You add text, and uh, what you have to do inside is whatever text you want to put, A and A and D, it starts printing. But I don't want to print my name. I want to print velocity um, equals velocity equals, it's going to print that. And then after that, right next to it, I want to print uh, the velocity variable. That's what I want. You might wonder what this plus is. All it does is it takes this, it, it prints velocity equals, and then whatever you put after that, it attaches to it. And the reason why velocity is not inside quotations is that's a variable. And this is just some text that you're just printing. You're printing whatever. You can print whatever inside over here. Now, will this work? Let's see. No, it doesn't show. It doesn't show up. There are many problems. Why? p5.js says text was expecting at least three arguments. It needed three things. Just like a circle requires x, y, where to put it, and the, si and the diameter, this requires what text to print. But after that, you have to tell it where to print it. And say in this case, I want to print it at 100, 350. Now do you think this should work? Let's see. It doesn't, okay, but I'll show you. Yeah, it's actually working. It's actually working, but we can't see it. You know why? Because the default color of text over here is black, and our background is black, so we can't see it. So I have to change that. Fill with white, so that my text becomes white, and then I can see it. White. There it is, but it's too small. I don't like it. Do you like it? I'm going to just in increase the size of it. Text size. I'm going to make it, say, 30. This should work. Now all I want you to do, so the velocity is 2, uh, which shouldn't be surprising because we just made the velocity 2. This will be more interesting when it changes. So let's make the velocity 10. Let's see if this works. Velocity 10. So it shows you the velocity. Velocity 1. What I want you to do is get to the point where you can print the velocity like I've shown you over here. And then let's continue adding forces to the code. You've made the velocity. You've printed the velocity. Now, when the body has a force acting on it, what will change? Which of these variables is going to change? Is it going to be x? Is it going to be y? Is it going to be velocity? Think about it. Option 1 for you is x will change, but the velocity will still remain the same as the force is applied. Option 2 for you is the velocity itself will start increasing, which is going to happen. That's right. The velocity will change, right? Newton's first law. If there's an external force, the body's velocity will increase in that direction. So how do we do that? I'm going to increase the velocity by making exactly what I did, very similar to what I did with my position, with my x, which is velocity equals velocity plus 1. Now, what am I doing here? I'm making it so that each time this loop runs, not only is my position increasing by the amount of the velocity, right? the position each time will increase by 1. right? That's what we did earlier. But here, the position will increase by 1, right? and then Velocity itself will become velocity plus 1. So after the first time the loop runs, the velocity becomes 2. So the ball's going at a speed 2 right now. And then the next time the loop runs, the ball's going at a speed 3. So the ball's speeding up. It's accelerating. That's what we've done. Congratulations. With this line of code, once you build it, you would have built an acceleration into your code. So let's go do that. Let's watch it first. Yep, there it is. The ball's accelerating like continuously. It's, it's, a, it's at a speed of some 356 now. Unfortunately, it's outside the frame, so we can't see it. Um, like it's, whew, there it is. What I want to do 
uh, sorry for anybody's microphones as I did that. 0 0.1. I'm going to make it smaller so we can actually see it for a while. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so what I want you to do now is implement this one line, the acceleration line into your code, and then, then let's start talking. Okay, so your ball accelerates now, but is this what we wanted? Let's go look at the um, code that we want to build. Our poor Among Us character is still going, see, at that same velocity. So you wanted to feel a force, feel an acceleration, only when you press the mouse. That's not what's happening right now in our, our version, right? First of all, it's not even a character, it's still a ball. We'll figure that out. But if I press only, it should feel a force. It should feel that the velocity change. How do we do that? Let's come back here. So what's happening now? The velocity is becoming, I've made it 0 0.1 so that it's a tiny, tiny push, okay? But that's happening the moment I run the code. Boom, it just keeps going. But I don't want that to happen. I only want that to happen when I press the mouse. And there's a way to do this. Uh, whenever you want to control which lines of code are actually happening. Whenever you want to control that, you can do that with one thing called conditions. Hey, when should it happen? If the mouse is pressed, only then should this line of code run. And you can do that with what's called an if command. If, and this might be new to you, it's called a conditional. So if mouse is pressed, what is this? So if mouse is pressed, Mouse is pressed is a variable that's already there. You don't have to go declare it. See, it becomes red in color. That basically means that it's already been defined. Then if mouse is pressed, whatever you put inside these two curly brackets after that, that code will run only if whatever condition you put in this is true. So here, what's the condition? If mouse is pressed. So what the computer returns to you if you say if mouse is pressed, the value inside this, mouse is pressed will either be true or false. If you're not pressing the mouse, the value of that is false. If you're pressing the mouse, the value is true. So if this mouse is pressed is true, then velocity will become equal to velocity plus 0.1. Now pause for a moment, think about it. What have we done here? We've made it so that, hey, I want the ball to accelerate. I want its velocity to increase. But only when I push, only when I push the mouse. We've already accomplished it, this just should work. So let's see if this works. Let's click. The velocity is 1. Is it changing? No. But if I go here and push it, it's going faster. Push it, it's going faster. It's now at some 3. We have made it so that the ball gets pushed when we push the mouse. We've added physics and force into our toy world. What I want you to do is go and add this condition. If mouse is pressed, watch out for the capitals here. I is capital and P is capital. It's called camel case. And implement this condition into your code. Now over here, you've already built the ball, you've also implemented force in it, right? If you push the button, the, the velocity increases. Now if you want to increase the pushing, right, which, what will you change? What's the, what's the thing that's actually increasing? How much push it's feeling? Over here, right? If I make it like 1, velocity equals velocity plus 1, the ball is just happy, but if I now push, it gets a much larger push. Can you see that? Yeah, a much larger push. So what you're really doing here is this thing is what is actually making how much it's getting pushed. Play with it, think about it. But there's a much more important thing to think about in some ways, which is, why is it not a character? It's still a ball. I don't want a ball. I actually want to build what they wanted me to. How do I do that? Now for this, you're going to learn how to add images to your code. And uh, once you add the image, you're also going to learn how to print or display that image so that it moves. Are you ready? So what we're going to do is first, uh, we're going to load the image onto a variable inside our code. So we're going to create a variable, something to hold this image inside it. So I'm going to call that variable among us. Okay, so I have a variable called among us. What I wanted to have is the image of among us. But it, will it have anything right now? It's nothing. The computer just creates a box, puts nothing inside it right now. How do I add the image that I want into it? So I have the image that I want. If you click this right little arrow over there, you can actually see the image already over here. It's called redamongus.png. I've loaded it, it's uploaded over here. And there are, you can add more images to this. If you want to add your own image, you can always do that. You can just go here and upload file. You can even put your face if you want to. Uh, so I know redamongus is there. But my variable amongus needs to store that. And there is a way to do it. It's by writing what's called a function, a function preload. So what does this function do? 
So whenever you're writing a function, notice that it'll have these kinds of parentheses next to it. You might wonder why does it have it? For example, variables won't, right? Like velocity doesn't. Um, it's a good question. Think about that. But the function preload, if you go inside it, what you want it to do, it does what it, it says. It preloads whatever you want into it. So you want this variable among us to have the image, this thing called red among us. That's what you want. So how do you do that? You do that using a function called load image. So L O A D I cap I capital load image. And within that, you're gonna call the name of this file. Whatever file you uploaded, whatever name you gave. In my case, the name of the file is red among us.png. It's super important that I get every single alphabet of this correct. Otherwise, the computer knows nothing about what I want. Load image red among us.png. So now hopefully. This variable called among us, this box, has inside it whatever image was there over here. Great. I want you to, this is the function that you're writing. Notice that it's outside everything. It's not inside setup or inside draw. It's a function that it's, that's outside and completely out over here. So now among us, this variable has the image. But I have to print that image. How do I do that? Now there's a function for that as well. Now just after this circle boy, I'm going to go draw the image. So luckily, luckily, the function to draw the image is called image. So image, and then just like for circle you told where to draw it and what size. Over here you have to first tell, what's the first thing you want to tell an image? This image function. What image to draw? And I want to draw the among us image. Among, among, yeah, among us image. Now the next thing I want to tell it is where to draw it, right? Where do I want it? And I want it at the same x, y that the circle was x comma y, right? Now with this, what will this code do? It will draw a circle, of course. It will also draw this image. What image? Among us at the point x comma y. Those are the three arguments or parameters we call it that this function takes. So let's see what happens now. Will it draw among us for us? Oh no, I don't see any among us. What's going on? I don't know what's going on, but I think I have a feeling there's a chance that this among us the, the file is like really, really large, the image, maybe the image is somewhere else, so I want to give it a size. So how do you give it a size? So among us, comma, x, comma, y, those are three things that tells which image to draw and where to draw it, but I can also give more to it. Uh, many times you can do this. I'm going to tell what size to draw it, and I'm going to say like 200, comma, 200. What that is, is how many width, how much is the width of this image, and what is the length of this image. That's what we're telling. Let's see if that draws it. There it is! So what had actually happened was the Among Us image is so big that it was outside the frame. Uh, so now it's back in the frame. There's an Among Us and a ball that's moving. I feel really nice to see this. I'm going to get rid of the R circle. I'm going to get rid of our circle. So you can actually see the new lines of code you've added right now. What I'm highlighting over here, that's one line that's printing the image. And this function is loading the image, right? What I want you to do is get to this point. In the next section that you're building, get to this point where our poor Among Us baby is ready to take a force on it. Yeah, there's a force. Push it, push it, push it, and bye-bye. And there you are. Once you build it, you would have finished the requirements of the game development company, and you can go show to them and argue with them why your code actually has real physics and follows Newton's laws. Go ahead and do that.